The Digital Technologies Curriculum, which is part of ICT in the Australian Curriculum, makes a distinction between the ICT general capability, where students can use IT to accomplish various tasks, to the Digital Technologies Curriculum, where students can create digital solutions to problems. And that's what we're going to look at here. We're going to look at how we might address a um, application of the Digital Technologies Curriculum to a problem that is common to a lot of schools. And I'm talking about the kitchen garden problem. <coughs> this is a problem that exists with all schools, which basically boils down to how do I keep my garden watered? Because gardens need water, we know that. And watering the garden is difficult in Christmas holidays and other holidays during the year and even hot weekends. Um, we need to make sure that, that happens so that any kitchen garden that we've got remains productive and we don't have to start from scratch again all the time. So part of the digital technologies curriculum is using three different types of thinking, so that's systems thinking, design thinking and computational thinking. So we're going to kick off with design thinking because what design thinking does is to help us understand the nature of the problem in a better way so that we can provide a solution that is the best possible solution. And it's an iterative process, as you can see. We go around and around and around trying to increasingly provide a better solution until we decide, OK, we're going to get off here now um, and design a, a uh, or put into practice a full implementation. But we still go through the process of, OK, how can we improve on this? So it's a process of continuous improvement. And it starts with a phase called empathy. Empathy is one of the words that might be used, could be discovery, could be anthropology. And basically, when we start looking at this, we're trying to throw a whole bunch of ideas onto um, the palette of choice. So here we've got a whole bunch of different ideas which kids might come up with as a brainstorming session to look at the simple problem of plants dying over Christmas. And you'll see down the bottom that there is a reference to the Australian Curriculum Digital Technologies there. And throughout this movie, you'll see a whole bunch of references as we uh, progress, showing you where the particular issue that we're addressing at the time features within the Digital Technologies Curriculum. So our empathy phase gives us some idea about the nature of the problem. You can see that there is a whole bunch of issues there, uh, much more than simply watering over Christmas. You know, I want our plants to thrive. I don't want to waste water. I want the plants to survive instead of thriving. No one's here in the holidays. I want to use water effectively. Um, so that gives us a, a plan, if you like, an idea of the scope of the problem that we're trying to solve. And another way of looking at this is to use systems thinking to try to get some idea about all the components that contribute towards the problem. What are the things that affect this? And again, a brainstorming session might come up with a whole bunch of different ideas. We haven't fully um, exhausted all the different aspects of this system, by the way. There's lots of other things in here, such as the availability of water, the type of water, whether the water's salty or whether it's not salty, um, the, excuse me, the range of plants that we're dealing with and the size of the garden. All of those things are um, components of this system uh, that we're looking at. But this will give you an idea of the approach. So really to solve any problem, it boils down to trying to get a good question or a good series of questions, and in particular, a good driving question, which really is the fundamental um, question that demonstrates understanding of the exact nature of the problem that we're trying to solve. So how do I make sure the plants don't die over Christmas is perhaps not as good a question as we could ask, because there's a better question here, and that is managing, garden, uh, managing water use for the garden. Um, which might involve things like how do I conserve water, how do I know when to water, do I need to water all the time, etc, etc. We're looking here at sustainability 
um, which is uh, an important part of the curriculum in general. And it's an increasingly important element of the decisions that we make when we are trying to solve problems, in particular with the world's population rising as it is at the moment and the lack of water. Um, the conservation for best plant growth is something that's becoming really important. If we go back to design thinking now, and having had some idea about uh, what the scope of the problem is, both from a systems perspective, but also from an empathy perspective, trying to get some feeling for what the nature of the problem is, we can start to come up with ideas. And again, a brainstorming session might come up with a whole bunch of different ideas that might be possible. But going back to our driving question of uh, allowing the plants to thrive, all of those things there, watching plants for wilting, measuring humidity and temperature, they all, all contribute to um, the solution. But all of them have a basic flaw, and that is that they rely on people or things to happen at a particular time. So the idea of automating this process looks like a good solution to the problem that we've got. And we can take this to a prototype stage after ideation. We're going to come up with some sort of prototype. And that might be get a computer thingy to measure the soil water and turn on a pump when it gets low. Sounds pretty good. So it asks the question, how do we measure soil moisture? How do we nut that out? We're trying to plan, communicate ideas. Uh, how do we go about measuring soil moisture? And there might be lots and lots of different ways in which we could do that. We're going to investigate one, which is one prototype. But we could come back and decide that there are other ways of doing this and uh, in the design cycle and perhaps explore different prototypes or even within the one cycle. So that leads us to a thing called computational thinking, which is the third of the thinking styles that are involved in the digital technologies curriculum. And the first of those is decomposition, breaking a big problem into a small one. So in this instance, let's deal with the moisture measurement first, because if we can't measure moisture, then there's no point in turning on pumps because the amount of moisture that is there in the soil and our measurement of it is crucial to every other part of this system that we're going to deal with. Not all the computational thinking elements are represented here, but these are the ones that we will deal with most in this particular problem. Uh, abstraction, hiding stuff we don't need to worry about. There will be elements, as you'll see later on in this explanation, about how we're measuring the soil moisture and we're going to feed some information into a device. We're not too sure how it converts it to numbers, but we know that if we put this information in, we're going to get that information out. We don't really need to worry about how that conversion has happened, so we're not going to worry about it. And that's basically the principle of abstraction. We're going to design an algorithm a step that a computer can use to uh, steps that a computer can use to provide that solution, and we're going to represent data in different ways, not just numbers, letters, and graphics, as most people would normally associate with the word data, but also instructions to other devices and make them doing things that we want them to do. So let's start with the first element of computational thinking, which is decomposition. And we're only going to look at measuring soil moisture, nothing else, just measuring soil moisture. How do we go about doing that? And again, you can see a reference at the bottom here to the digital technologies curriculum. Well, computers use electricity, so maybe there's some way that we can get electricity to work for us. And we have something that's reasonably familiar that will alert us to the relationship between electricity and water and that's not using electrical devices in the bath, as we're reminded here with this diagram. So there's some sort of relationship that exists between electricity and water. And most people would know that if you're, if you're wet or if there's moisture around, where there is electricity, you're more likely to get um, electrocuted or be affected by that electricity because water, bath water in this instance, is not a bad conductor of electricity 
and that will deliver the electricity from the hairdryer to you directly and we will run into problems. You will explode, we'll die. So it's dangerous because there is a 240 volts in, in uh, play. So we're not gonna use 240 volts. We're gonna use three volts, which is what you'd see in a normal uh, little torch. Uh, two AA or AAA batteries will deliver um, three volts if they're hooked up the right way. So we're gonna use this facility that electricity finds it easier to get through water but we're only going to use a very low voltage so that there's not much energy available to do us any harm. And if we can use a torch and we're not going to get killed, then we should be right with this process too. That looks like the best way of proceeding. So let's have a look. Here we've got a circuit where a battery is supplying three volts of energy to that circuit. And that circuit goes from the battery through some dry soil and back to the battery. And here's a little charge. He looks very happy because he's just been given three volts. He's got some energy. This is potential energy. In other words, he's got the ability to use that energy to do some work. So as that circuit is complete, the little charge will travel around through the wires. Not very difficult to get through the wires. Uh, wires are good conductors, so therefore he doesn't lose much energy. But when she gets to the soil, getting through that soil is going to be hard because there's not much moisture. And as a consequence, if there's not much moisture, I'm going to have to work hard to get through it. And I'm going to have to use up some of those three volts to get through there. That energy, by the way, will be converted mostly into heat, although the amount of heating is pretty small because we haven't got much energy to start with. So once we've gone through that um, dry soil, we've used up most of the energy and therefore we're going to be able to use how much energy has been used up as an indicator of how moist the soil is along these lines. We're going to get a low voltage reading going through dry soil. And the reason why it will be a low voltage is that the charge has used up pretty much all of the three volts of energy that has been given to it from the battery. And as we progress through plants that are at wilt stage, in other words, the soil is reasonably dry, uh, we're going to get a higher voltage reading. And when we get to soil that is very moist, the charges don't have any difficulty getting through it, so therefore they don't use up much energy. We're going to have pretty much all of our three volts left over. And that can be further illustrated this way. We've got three volts of push or three volts of potential energy that each of these charges has. And as it goes through the dry soil, maybe half a volt because it's used up most of its energy from that three volts initially given to it by the batteries. If the soil is reasonably moist and you can see a happy worm there, then maybe one and a half volts would be measured. It's lost a little bit of energy, but not all of it. And if the soil is very moist, then we're not going to lose much energy at all and the whole three, vo three volts will be measured. So how are we going to do this? We need a thingy that will measure volts and then turn that into some thing that we can use in a calculation to determine the dryness of the soil. And such a device, you can see on the right hand side there, it's called a BBC micro bit, about 20 bucks. Now it can measure voltage on one of its pins and report it back as a number, which is pretty cool, because then we can say that if that number is below a certain number or above a certain number, then we know something about the moisture level of the soil and we can take some action um, based on that. So what is different about this in terms of normal computers is that normal computers will use what are called digital values, either ones or zeros. You've probably come across this before. But in this instance, the voltage is going to vary across virtually infinite bunch of values which is referred to as analog data. So the computer breaks this into an infinite range of values and you can see some indication there at the bottom 
of um, if the computer's reporting zero, that means zero volts, etc. This is done by a thing inside that called an analog to digital converter. Now, we don't need to know how that works, we just need to know that if we provide a voltage to it, it turns it into a bunch of numbers. And that's an illustration of abstraction, which is pretty cool. So what we could do is to put this into a system which looks pretty complex to begin with, but let's go through it bit by bit from the bottom right hand corner in an anti-clockwise fashion. We've got a soil moisture probe, which is two screws that you get from a hardware store. And those two screws screwed into a peanut butter lid in this instance, touching into the soil so that the electricity has to flow through the soil from one to the other. It's connected back to the BBC micro bit. The BBC micro bit is supplied with power by that three volts battery. There's our three volts. And the BBC hasn't quite got enough power to turn on a pump. It's only got three volts. So it needs a helper. So it can send a message to the helper saying, turn on the pump now. And the helper, or the relay as it's called, will be able to supply power from that uh, battery uh, array there to the pump. So the peanut butter lid doesn't cost much. A couple of screws, a dollar or so. The BBC, 20 bucks. The relay board, about seven. The battery pack without batteries, about $2. And the pump is a little um, submersible pump. It'll work underwater. And that's um, used normally in aquariums. It costs about $4. Now, it's not a very expensive um, process. But like our uh, decomposition before, let's not try and look at that as a whole. Let's just concentrate on one part of it and that's the soil moisture measurement. Now, in this instance, you'll notice that the two wires, the yellow and green, are connected to the two left-hand ones. It doesn't really matter at this stage um, where they are. Don't worry too much about the position of those wires for the moment, because that's going to be explained in a moment or two. So we're going to concentrate on just that little bit there. We're going to connect wires to the BBC micro bit, and we're going to build code to show the soil moisture as a number, and then we're gonna do something different if it's dry or wet, if the number therefore is small or large, and we're going to look at how we might do the coding for that. So we've looked at the main components of our, our digital system here, which also contains an analog part, and how they're gonna to connect together.